That is right, you read it correctly. PowerPoint now has built-in stock images. This is so awesome. I love this. I've used it already about 30 times. It only came out last week. So let me show you how it works. So let me exit out of slideshow mode. If you go to the Insert tab, hidden under Pictures, you get Stock Images. Wow, you can browse, you can search for things. So I could look for, for example, uh, children, whatever it is, you can type your search terms and get these browsing features. There's thousands of images here, stock images. They're all in landscape format, which is great. It's most conducive to how slides are looking. And once you find something that you want, you can just multi-select and click insert. PowerPoint's design ideas in Office 365 then gives you ways to arrange them however you have them. Uh, we're gonna revisit that a little bit later on because that does also work with these stock images, but I just wanted to show you that really, really quickly. Now, you may have noticed that there's actually four things in this sub-menu. The others are, in my mind, nowhere near as interesting, but um, they're still worth kind of knowing about, particularly icons, icons I really, really enjoy. Icons have been around for a while, but they've just had a large upgrade. Now that's really awesome, but unfortunately it's not available for everyone. This is only available if you are an Office Insider. That means that you get a pre-release of all the new features in Microsoft Office before they're released to everyone. Uh, if you go to File and then Account, then you can see here, I, I can see I'm on version 2004, which is year 2020 and 04 is the fourth month. And I have the Office Insider version, which means I get all of the features fastest. I also have Microsoft Office 365 Pro Plus. If you have PowerPoint 2010, 2013, 2016, 19, whatever it is, then you are not getting new updates every month. You need Office 365 to get new updates every month, like this stock images one. Now, hold off. Don't worry, if you haven't got the newest version, I will still show you how to do this within Google or do an equivalent within Google. Oh, I love this feature. Have I said that yet? <laughs> it's just so slick. It loads up so fast and you can browse. It even has a lot of these ones with less busy backgrounds on the side so you can write your content quite easily. Uh, they're just really good to use with PowerPoint. They're beautiful. They're high definition. And you know, even if you have some kind of busy ones that you like to use like this one, you can still have techniques either using design ideas to make it fill out the whole slide. And you can do all sorts of fun, advanced things with it. So here is my full screen image slide with some easy to read text that even color matches the most prominent color in the picture. So I'll link to my other video about that because it's a really great technique to learn. Now, what are the four different things there? This is four ways to show the word confused, for example, with a stock image, with this thing called cutout people, a sticker or an icon. Personally, I don't think any of them come close to the stock image and how cool that is. And in second place by far goes the icon because I've been using icons so, so often. So there are three levels of image transparency in my opinion. So the first one is kind of this beautiful background one, and I think this works really well on full screen slides. Or otherwise, inside a slide, I tend to like photos with transparent backgrounds a little bit like this. Or if I have this kind of vaguer icon, um, and I want to stack multiple up in one time and have them match the image of my branding, then I like to use this icon here. Now, this one, very, very great new feature that this video is covering. This one has been around for a while, but I love the revamp. This one's still not really easy to get within PowerPoint. I tend to do it through Google. And I tend to use pictures in one of three ways. As I said, a full screen slide looks really beautiful. Transparent ones can be inside the slide, or if they are just like non-transparent images like this, I will usually put a border or a style around it. This is sort of the way that I think it makes it pop the most. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's go to insert some stock images. Let's make a new slide, Control M. You can get to it through icons and just click here. And let's look for some lions. 
Well, let's just take these two of lions like that. I'm going to X out of this. This is a really great feature as well. And yeah, like I said, I enjoy using the borders around them. So to do that, I will click on this and choose picture format and then picture styles. Now there's quite a few of these. They've been around for a while. I think quite honestly, most of them suck. They're not very professional. There's only two that I actually like. One of them is this kind of black outline one. And one of them here, this works really well with kind of lighter pictures is this one, it's called Center Shadow Rectangle. Look at how much that pops. I think that's beautiful and really professional. In fact, uh, if you use Windows or if you use Macs, then this is how a lot of their dialog boxes look like. If I go to the Comprex Pictures dialog box, you can see it has that similar shadow around it to what I have put around this one. So I think this should be a lot more prominent, but I love this feature, Center Shadow Rectangle, particularly if you are sending screenshots, it looks beautiful. But also with these kind of images inside the slide to make them pop. Otherwise, this is my second favorite. It's called Simple Frame Black. Now, I did show you how to get those, but as I mentioned before, this like transparent background image, you can't get that from within PowerPoint's new feature. Plus, I also told you I'd show the non-Office 365 Insider users how to get these in Google. So let's go into Google and check that out. Now, let's say you're on Google and you want images of an elephant. So most people are used to clicking on the Images tab and you have these presets. I don't really think they're very useful. They just add to the search terminology. But what I love that most people have never done is clicked on the Tools button. This is amazing. Go to Color. Transparent. Now all of these are now transparent elephants, transparent background. If I click on it, it loads up and then I get this checkerboard symbol. So I can right click on an image and copy it. That's the fastest way to get it into PowerPoint. Just paste it there. And as you can see, it's transparent. So whatever my background is, it still appears kind of perfect. You can also, if you want to get, for example, orange-ish tint for elephants. I don't really use that feature. But in color, I always use transparent. Black and white can be nice as well if you're going for a style. I'm gonna go with any color and that clears the filters. Then go back to tools. And I love this as well. Go to size large. Before PowerPoint got stock images, this is exactly what I would do. If you click on an image, this is really high definition as you can see. Some of them are not quite as high definition like this one, but they're still pretty crisp for a PowerPoint slide. And you can add some filters as well. So if you want something that's labeled for reuse, you can click on that and then filter it so that you know that you're able to do this without breaking the law. Uh, also labeled for non-commercial reuse if you want to use that non-commercially. So yeah, that's really useful. It effectively means that you're able to use this and not really worry about things. The ones that are built into PowerPoint are licensed by Microsoft. So again, it's an idea that you're able to reuse these as you want. So in type as well, you have GIF. This is the way that I normally get GIFs. If you have these three filters, that's pretty obscure. Don't even know how this is an elephant, but generally go to clear your filters and then type GIF. I use this all the time as well. You click on one, there you go. <laughs> The interesting thing about a GIF is if you copy it and then paste it into your slide, then it doesn't autoplay. But if you go to slideshow mode, then it autoplays. So if it's if you're not seeing it autoplay in the normal edit view, then don't worry. Uh, just check that it works okay in slideshow mode. Currently, PowerPoint Online doesn't support GIFs that well, but I'm sure that feature is coming. Some GIFs work well, others don't. You can even, if you're in a new presentation, without typing anything, you can go to Design Ideas and just get these HD images showing you there, which is actually really, really cool. So yeah, you can get these things. It actually designs a theme. Again, I have another video explaining more about this. <laughs> the other thing that I really like about this feature is every time you sort of open it, 
it gives you more different presets. So the list here is a bit different. The categories that are picked out are a bit different. The Again, the order for cutout people and stuff like that as well. Just to show you, this is my stock images default. And then if I go back there, we're going to see how it's switched over. So yeah, all of these are different and it allows you to browse a lot better. So there you go, thousands of high definition stock images built into PowerPoint. Love this feature. You're already paying for PowerPoint and you get this amazing privilege. It appears not only in PowerPoint, but the same four options are also in Excel, Word and Outlook as well in the same place. So if you like this video and you're excited like I am about stock images inside PowerPoint, then please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel for more great content about PowerPoint, Excel, Zoom, all of your favorite software applications.